Okay, so let's talk about the same idea in terms of mapping. So uh, let's continue on from last time. Somebody read this for us. Uh, have you ever wondered? How about uh, anybody want to read this for us? Go ahead, Andrew. Have you ever wondered how maps of the round earth can be made on flat plains? The diagram illustrates the idea of becoming a polar map of the northern hemisphere. The plane is placed tangent to the globe of the earth at its lowest point. Every point P of the globe is projected straight upwards to exactly one point called P. P prime. Uh -huh. Okay, so look at all my images. What are the images on this picture? P, P is P the image? No. No. P is the pre-image of P prime. So what's the image? P prime. What what other images do we have? D prime. Q prime. And since this paper is right on the uh, North Pole, guess what? N, what? N is the also N is both pre-image and image because it's like right on it. You see how this is how they map it, right? Because how do you map a three-dimensional things on a two-dimensional space? You know what I mean? So they just, right? They just go straight up, right? And then plot that point. And then that's how you, right? Get a map of uh, Northern Hemisphere, right? Map of the uh, sphere, right? And so as you can see, this is a mapping. Isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, so we have a pre-image and image and so forth. Easy enough? So that's the same idea that we've been talking. Now here's an example in terms of mapping, okay? So let's move on then. So do you guys remember from last time we talked about one-to-one -one function, that, spe that special function, one-to-one? -one? Do you think it's the it's same thing for the mapping also? Yeah, it is, go ahead, somebody read this for us. How about, Eamon, can you read this for us, a mapping? A mapping or a function from set A to set B is called a one-to-one -one mapping or a one-to-one -one function. If every member of B has exactly one B image. Exactly, so remember one-to-one -one function each output has to have exactly one input. Same thing for mapping, one-to-one -one mapping, right? Every mapping is not one-to-one, -one, but if you, have one, if you have that special type of mapping, one-to-one -one mapping, each image has exactly one pre-image. Pre Does that make sense? Yes? Yes. So, uh, can you read this, continue reading, Amen. There's one, two, sorry. It's a one map uh -huh. of the northern hemisphere of the world onto a circular region in the, in the tangent way, the shaded area in the diagram. However, the squaring function f to x, f of x, f of x equals, equals to x squared. It's mm -hmm. not one to one because, for example, nine has two three images, three images. Okay, so let's see whether we can understand. First of all, what are they saying? You see this? Uh, mapping that we just showed you up here. What kind of mapping is this? This is a, they're saying this is one-to-one -one mapping. Why is this one-to-one -one mapping, guys? Who could explain? Let's see if you understood what they're saying here. Nicholas. It's one-to-one -one because p the answer to p is p prime. The answer to p is Well, actually, you got to think about the other way. What what is your image here in this case? The image is a circle. Yes. So the p prime is your image, right? So how many pre-image does p prime have? Has. One. What about D prime? One. One, which is simply D. D. And do you see why they name it D prime? Yeah. D, it's, it's easy. What about uh, Q prime? What is the pre image of Q prime? Q. Q, and there's only one, right? Therefore, it's a one to one mapping. Does that make sense? Now, if you're mapping, like, not just the hemisphere, but the whole sphere, would this be a uh, one to one mapping? Oh. No, then it would, be, would not be a one to one mapping because you'd have the same point right underneath, right? Right? Does that make sense? Okay, so, um, but why do they say then f of x equals x squared is not one-to-one? -one? They're saying that's not one-to-one -one function. Why not? Isn't that a function? Yeah. f of x equals what, x squared? How come this is not a one-to-one? -one? Samantha? Exactly right. Nine, the image has how many pre-image in this case? Two. two. Well, you could think of what, uh, like four. How many uh, pre-image would it have? Two, negative two and two back right there. Does that make sense? So this function, right, would not be a 
one-to-one -one function, right? Even though it's a function, it's not one-to-one. -one. Does that make sense? So you guys, under, you guys understand what one-to-one -one mapping is. It's yeah. really similar to one-to-one. -one. It's the same thing, right? It's one-to-one -one function and one-to-one -one mapping. Good, okay? Okay, there's another name for this one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, somebody read this for us. One-to-one -one mapping from whole plane to the whole plane is called what? Transformation. Okay, so another name for one-to-one -one mapping is called transformation. Does that make sense? So if you have one-to-one -one mapping that uh, maps the whole plane to a whole plane, okay? Uh, so it's going actually two-dimensional space to two-dimensional space. Whereas the one with the uh, hemisphere, would that be called transformation? No. Not really. It's going three-dimension to two, okay? But if you're going from um, two-dimension to two-dimension and it's one-to-one -one, uh, mapping, then it's called transformation. Is that okay? Now, there's a special type of transformation called... Isometry. Somebody read this for us. More, uh, moreover, how about Ibera? Can you read this for us? It's called isometry. Okay, so write this down. This is important. So uh, these are some things that these are the key idea. One-to-one -one mapping from the whole plane to the whole plane is called transformation, and within this transformation. There's a special type called isometry. Um, if, so th I should underline this, if the transformation maps every segment to a what? Congruent, that's the key part, congruent segments, okay? So write that down, I'll wait. Okay, so by definition of an isometry maps, any segment uh, to a congruent segment, right? It maps every, any segment to a congruent segment, does it not? So uh, we can say that the isometry preserves the distance. Does that make sense? It makes sense, right? It's the same thing. Saying the same thing. Now, uh, another name for isometry is called congruence mapping. Do you see why it's called congruence mapping? Because what does isometry do? It Segments. preserves the distance. distance. Therefore, things are going to be congruent when you take this, when you apply this isometry. Does that make sense? So that's what this next theorem is talking about. So write that down. I'll wait. Okay. So here's our theorem. Now we're finally ready to give you a theorem. An isometry maps a triangle to a, and think about what we just said. Isometry is a congruence mapping. Isn't that right? Because it preserves the distance. So an isometry maps a triangle to a what kind of triangle? Congruent. Exactly right. It maps a congruent triangle. And here's an example. Here's a picture. Okay, so. I mean, the two triangles don't look exactly like, right, in terms of where the position-wise, but aren't these two triangles congruent? By the way, how do you think they're going to show that these two triangles are congruent? It's because it preserves the distance, so length AB is the same thing as the what? Length of A prime, B prime. Length AC is going to be same as A prime, C prime. BC, same as B prime, C prime. Why would these two triangles congruent? Side, 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 right? Easy enough? Okay, so uh, we'll talk about this more in depth next time, but that's the basic idea. Right? Because we're taking this transformation, right, which is an isometry, you know the distance will be preserved. So that's why by side, 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 the two triangles will be congruent. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so write that down. And there are some corollaries that come from this. Okay, so watch this. Oh, no, actually, we actually proved it. Okay, that's how we do it, right? We look at each of these segments, right? So by definition of isometry, they preserve the distance. So by side, 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 the two triangles are congruent. Easy. Does that make sense? So from this theorem, we get some corollaries. What do you think about these angles then? Do you think it'll preserve the angle measure? Yes. Okay, so guess what this corollary says? An isometry maps an angle to a what? Congruent angle. Easy enough? Yeah. Look at these two triangles. If they're congruent, what do you know about the corresponding parts of congruent triangles? They are congruent, right? What can you tell me about the areas then? They're the same. They're the same, right? So look, that's the second corollary. An isometry maps a polygon to a, so they're not talking about triangle anymore, but polygons, right? Basically, po polygons are made up of a bunch of triangles, isn't that right? So an isometry maps a polygon to a polygon with the same area. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, go ahead and write it down. I'll wait. So unfortunately, I don't have time to go through the examples. I strongly suggest you go through the examples one, two, and three before you start in your homework tonight. Does that, and your homework tonight is just classroom example. Is that okay? Yeah. Does this make sense? So this is to tomorrow, yes, after the test. Does this make sense? All right.